You two made the right choice. This is horrible. Might as well be selling the big issue. Hey, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You're lucky you're not living in a cell after the trouble you've caused. He didn't mean it, Mum. He didn't know what was going to happen. No, he never does. So what are you doing today? Well, we can't stay here forever. I'm going to have to go down the house and see what they can do. And you're with me again today. Um, I was thinking of going to the job centre. See if there's anything going. You what? You must think we were born yesterday. Oh, no, honest. I want to get a job. And how do we know that you're not going to go out and steal a couple of cars? Or break into a shop? Or demolish someone's house? Because I'm telling you I'm not. Look, come with me if you don't believe me. What happened with our melon there? And the house? It's made me realise, hasn't it? Can't spend my life hanging around doing nothing. I've got to get myself sorted out. Get a job. Well, what do you think? I don't know with this track record. All right, you can go. But you make sure when you've finished, you go straight to Sinbad's shop. Do you hear me? Dad, are you all right? No, it's gonna be all right. We're both really glad we come back. <laughs> Drek and Elaine and Tanya will come back too. No, Leah, I don't. Look, I'm sorry, son. What for? <sighs> because somewhere, somewhere along the line, I lost my focus. I put Elaine and her family's needs before yours and Gemma, and I never even seen her. Trying to buy love, eh, Dad? Dad. Am I supposed to be putting my clothes back in the drawer or will this be leaving again? Hey, we're home now, babe. I'm not going anywhere. Come here. Hi. Hi. I'm not too early, am I? No, not at all. Right. Let's see where we're up to on this. Well, your divorce can't go ahead until the arrangements for Dan have been agreed. But seeing as we've begun negotiations, I don't see that dragging on much longer. So what happens next? Well, this is where it starts getting a little complicated, I'm afraid. Seeing as both you and Belle have got daggers drawn, we're going to have to appear before a judge in chambers. What, what does that mean, exactly? Well, the judge will want to know how Danny feels about everything. And at 14, the decision's more than likely to be left to Dan. I see. Not the easiest decisions for someone to make. No. So, how have things been since we, um... Oh, OK. Uh, I'm coping. No, I, um... I met with Dan. Oh, uh, Right, uh... He's fine. Well... He seems fine. I'm, I'm trying to make life with me as attractive as possible. In what way? Presence, uh, days out. Trying to be the perfect father, I suppose. Do you think that's wise? Probably not. But as Belle and I seem to be in competition for his affections, well, I, I want to be the one to win. Am I seeing things or what? All right, son. What happened? Yeah, you were right. Stupid idea. I haven't done anything wrong, so why should I run away like some sort of criminal? Well, thank God for that. How did you convince Elaine? I mean, she was dead set on leaving. Elaine and Tanya got off. God knows where. You what? They've left you to face the music on your own? Yeah, something like that. Well, are they coming back? No. I gave an ultimatum and uh, she chose to go. Now I don't even think I want her back. Well, I'm really sorry, mate. I'm... But where does it leave you? What are you going to do now? I don't know, sir. I can't even think straight. I just thought I'd check on the chippy. You know? Well, the chippy can wait. Anybody have a word with your solicitor? See what Elaine's getting off's going to do to you. 
Hi, love. So did Carly get in okay? Yeah, her friend Lauren was there, so she walked in with her. <laughs> Soon forgot about me. Oh, it's great, she's really settled in. Oh, that's good. Do you want me to babysit for you tonight? Going out with Peter again, aren't you? Yeah, if you don't mind. No, of course I don't. How are things going between you two? Okay. It's a really good laugh, actually. Right. I better get ready for work then. I'm supposed to be opening up. <laughs> Seems to be getting on really well with this piece of one, doesn't she? And so what, like? Well, I know it sounds selfish, but I'm just a bit concerned. I mean, if they do it, it's off. They might decide to move in together or something. You what? And when did she decide they were moving in together? She only been going out with him for two minutes. Shh, will you keep your voice down? I didn't say she was. I said if she did. I mean, as much as I want her to be happy, I, I don't know how we're going to be able to cope, Jim, without Lindsay's contribution to the housekeeping. Oh, I'm glad you called in. I was just about to give you a ring. Well, what's happened? Have there been calls or something? Called? What are you talking about? Oh, I, I thought that... What were you saying you were going to give me a ring about something? I, I thought you knew. Knew what? You're going to have to give me a hand here. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Uh, Elaine and Tanya, they've done a runner. What? They've absconded? Oh, Mick. Why? I and mean, where have they gone? I don't know. I don't think she knew herself. It was all a bit of a panic, you know, nothing definite. <laughs> Did you know anything about this? Look, I may as well be honest with you here. When she left, me and the kids went with her. But I couldn't go through with it. I've not done anything wrong, so I'm not willing anywhere. And what made Elaine decide to go? Panic. Fear. Everything. She's convinced we're going to be found guilty and that they'll take Tanya off her. There's no way she's ever coming back. She's sure it's for the best. <laughs> well, she certainly hasn't done you any favours. In fact, from where I'm standing, she's made things considerably worse. How do you mean? Well, the CPS were considering dropping the case against you. That's why I was about to ring you. You mean they weren't even going to prosecute? No. But that was before all this. I've no idea what they'll decide to do now. I'd better try and get hold of my contact at the CPS and see what I can find out. And you better get yourself straight down the police station and tell them what's happened. All this bed and breakfast business is ridiculous. And all this eating out, I was going to have a skint. Don't worry, it's my treat. Can't we just order? I'm starving. In a minute, love. Tim will be here soon. Now, he went down to the job centre after I left years. Guess what? No sign of your son anywhere. And he never turned up at the shop later. I knew we should have let him go off on his own. Well, God knows where he is now. Anyway, I picked up a few application forms for them and some leaflets about courses he might be interested in, so... <sighs> my belly thinks my throat's been closer, yeah? I don't know why we couldn't have lunch at home. Do you back at school in half an hour? Well, I just thought we'd make a nice change if we came out for a meal together. I don't often get a chance to talk. Oh, dear. I feel a lunch coming on. <laughs> Not at all. I was rather hoping we could have some fun. I want to make sure that we spend more time together. I don't feel as if I've made much of an effort lately. Well, I suppose you have had other things on your mind. Yeah. Well, perhaps if I hadn't spent so much time with Eleanor, you wouldn't have got mixed up with the O'Leary kid. I do care about you, Dan. I just want you to know that. Yeah, I know. And so does Mum. Yeah. She does. And you shouldn't blame yourself for me getting mixed up with Tinhead. That was me just being really stupid. Anyway, I won't be hanging around with him anymore. I'm through my rebellious stage. <laughs> Down there. I mean, the house and assistant was a right cow. We should more or less tell me that our Ben and Timothy should have well left home by now and tried to palm me off with a two bedroom flat for me and our Melanie. Oh, you're joking, so what did you say? <sighs> Told her where to go. They're not trying that one on me. I had a four bedroomed house and I'm going to stay at that BB till I get another one. Well, maybe we should be looking for somewhere to buy. Oh, yeah. And what would like? Well, I've got a few bob put away. Oh, sin. I can't have you forking out all your savings on us. Well, hang on, I thought we were all in this together. Well, yeah, but... Well, I'm trying to show a bit of commitment here. You know, let you know that my intentions are honourable. Oh, oh Sim. <laughs> are you going to get married? I hold your horses, will you? Let's buy somewhere first and then... 
Well, whatever happens, happens. What are you doing here? Where's Holly Lane? She's gone. She's been in touch. No, not yet. So how come you're back then? Because I'm not going to run away. And I'm certainly not going to be taking my kids into hiding like some kind of fugitive. So what about Holly Lane and Tanya? You mean you've left them? I didn't leave anyone. She left me. And she's landed me right in it. I've got to go down to the police station to explain why my wife has done a runner when she's supposed to be innocent. What? And grass it up to the police? No. That's the sort of thing you'd do. I'd just be helping them with their inquiries. I'll probably want to speak to you as well. Me? What will they want to speak to me for? I can't tell them anything. <laughs> well, that didn't seem to bother you when you spoke to them the last time. I wouldn't mind, but Elaine didn't even have to go. Ellen the Kitson's just told me that the CPS were thinking about dropping the case. But now that Elaine's gone on the run, she made everything seem dead suspicious. Don't fool yourself, Mick. This has looked suspicious since the very start. Hang on. I've done nothing that I'm ashamed of. Keep that for the jury. You never know. Maybe they'll believe you, because I certainly don't. Oh, look, this is madness. You know, I stuck my neck out to help your family. You helped us. Is that what you call it? The only person you helped was yourself, to my mother's money. And when she was of no fear, they used to you. You smothered her to death. Cassie, you know that isn't true. Look, if this carries on, I stand to lose everything. My kids, my business, my freedom. Even you can see how unfair that is. Cassie, can't you help me? I can't really believe that I did this for myself. Don't make me laugh, Mick. Talk about you losing everything. I lost my mother and my sister because of you. I've been onto you since day one. You might have fooled my mother and Elaine, but not me. Now Elaine's gone, don't come to me for help. You are on your own, mate. How are they not in love? Not too bad. Do you think Ali's going to notice us? What do you think? Was a six-inch rip in them? <sighs> Hi, love. Kylie asleep? Yeah, she must have been tired out. Oh, thanks for picking her up, Dad. Right. I won't be late and I'll see you later. <laughs> see you, love. Have a nice time. Will do. Bye, love. Bye. Who's she going out with? That pizza fella. Yeah. Oh. She looked lovely, didn't she? And her skirt's getting shorter. Or is it just me getting older? You're getting older, Jimmy. They all wear them that length now. Yeah, well, she better watch out. Because you'll be giving that Peter one the wrong idea dressed like that. That's if he's got any ideas, like. Peter's a real gentleman. She said he came into the chippy with a big box of chocolates for her. A gentleman? Oh, yeah. Oh, come on, let's face it. Any fella who messes round with women's hair for a living can't be old man. I mean, imagine if I had to call on him to help me out in a fight, huh? I couldn't see him getting stuck in, could you? Be too worried about chipping his nail varnish. Don't exaggerate. Anyway, why are you looking to all Lindsay's fellas to help fight your battles? I don't want him to fight me battles, I'm just saying. Well, don't say anything. Peace is a nice lad. Do you know what? You're jealous. Cos our Lindsay isn't your little girl anymore. You can't expect her to spend the rest of her life on her own, love. Oh, hello. We didn't expect to see you back so soon. What can we get you? I'll have a whiskey, please. I'll get that on the house. As you'd think so. At least it's quiet tonight, eh? Mm, yeah, but don't forget. It's still early. We never get any trouble, really, even when it's busy. I wouldn't count on that. Listen, I've been thinking about discussion last night, and I'm convinced you need someone in that door. No, honest. There's hardly any trouble in here. It's dead mellow, so we don't need any security, but thanks anyway. Trust me, you need a bouncer. You don't want fights in here every night, do you? Yeah, but that's hardly likely to happen, though, is it? Well, I don't know. That depends, doesn't it? On what, like? <sighs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. See that man over there? That's my spar. I'm going to leave him on your door all night, free of charge, 
courtesy of my business. No, I can't be fairer than that, can I? And what business is that? Security. No, you're all right. I don't want them. I really appreciate what you've done last night, but well, we don't need them, honest. You may not think so, Jackie, but believe me, you do. Catch you later. Was that? He was a bit of all right, wasn't he? I feel like the forceful type. I think I've just been threatened. Is Jimmy in? Yes, come in. Thanks. Eh, uh, Jimmy, it's Ollie for you. All right, Sol. Okay. Hi, I just wondered if you finished with the walking gear. Yeah. Just here. Cheers, mate. And listen, um, I'm dead sorry, but. They're not in the same condition they were when you lent them to me. You're not kidding. Sorry about that. They have been mended. Who by? Helen Keller? No, Jackie. Oh, sorry. Um... It's all right, though. What the? I... Yeah, um, sorry. I meant to tell you about that. What the hell have you been doing with these? No, on second thoughts, I don't want to know. Anyway, I'll... I have to love you and leave you. Got a bit of an essay to do. Hang on. What about my things? How do you mean, like? Well, they need replacing, don't they? Yeah, well, I'd like to sort you all only, um... I'm a bit skint at the moment. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not my problem. I want to be reimbursed in full. Oh, I'll have to get that. Urgent personal call, you know. Look, I'll see you right. I'll buy you a pint. Cheek of him. Hello? Where do you think you've been? Yeah. We were down at Barbrookie waiting for you. We were supposed to go there for our tea, remember? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, well, yeah. Just like you forgot to go down to the job centre, so soft lad, they had to go down looking for courses for you. You didn't have to. Hey, don't be so smart. We can't be expected to support you forever. You've got to decide what you want to do with your life. I'm not being smart. I just meant you didn't have to. Because I sorted my own future out. What do you mean? <laughs> what I say? I've made my mind up. I know what I'm going to do. Oh, Mum, you're going to be dead pleased with me. I know you are. And what is it like? Well, I've got an interview tomorrow. I'm joining the army. <laughs> so you're saying this Finnegan character threatened you? Well, no, not exactly. Jackie, what kind of an answer is that, love? He either did or he didn't. Oh, Dad, it's not that simple. He's not just going to come right out and threaten me, is he? And anyway, it's not what he said, it's the way he says it. So how long have you got in for him? Well, he says he's going to just put him on for tonight, free of charge. Well, then I wouldn't worry about it. He's soft enough to want to stand on the door all night without getting paid at leave him. He's not doing any harm. Come on, Jackie, let's just go out. Katie, love, nobody does anything for nothing in this life. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Right, well, I'm going to go over there right now and throw him out by the scruff of his neck. <laughs> Did you fancy coming into town? What now? No, tomorrow morning. I thought I'd meet you down at Lewis's. <laughs> of course, I mean, now, when do you think of me? I want to take you down to Mets. Tell me Mama wasn't going to be late. And I've got Carly to think of, remember? I know you have, but she's going to be in bed, isn't she? Oh, come on, it's not like you're being a bad mother, is it? Just because you go to a club once in a while and enjoy yourself. I know, I know that. Anyway, I already am enjoying myself. Oh, come on, then. Drink up, phone your mum, tell her you're going to be late. Go on, be a devil. <laughs> we don't need you. Here. We do. Dad, you okay? Yeah. Just got a bit of a twins, that's all, talking to Tarzan over there. He's not having any, Jack. Said he's been told to stay there till closing time. Dad, just calm down, will you? You're gonna make yourself feel. Yeah, you yeah, are, Mr. Dixon. Sit down, get your breath back in. This is a setup, you know. The whole thing, the bouncer, the fight, everything. We can't just stand here and do nothing. Well, what can we do? Is that Finnegan fella coming back? I don't know, love. Listen, Katie, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to forget about us going out tonight. I'm not going anywhere until it's all sorted out. No, that's fine, love. Will you stop worrying? Just enjoy yourself. <laughs> All right, sure. Who was that, Kat? Oh, Lindsay rang. Says she's going to a club. You are? 
Well, that's nice, isn't it? And what happened to her won't be late? Well, she won't be that late. What's got into you? You're acting like she's 15 again. Love, I just don't want her taking advantage of you. She can't just go swanning off whenever she feels like it, you know, and expect you to babysit at the drop of an hat. I mean, what have you wanted to go out? When do I ever go anyway? You've forgotten something, haven't you? I'm stuck here, mine's in Will. Anyway, Lindsay would babysit for me if I needed her. No, that is not the point, love. Lindsay is Carly's mother. That child has been at school all day. They've hardly seen each other. She should be here, looking after her. I have a good mind to tell her and all. You'll do no such thing. Jimmy, Lindsay's still only a young girl. So don't you ever begrudge her just a bit of fun. Look, love, I haven't been able to help our kids financially, have I, like other parents do. That's not because I didn't want to, Jim. I just couldn't afford it. Let's face it, we weren't always there for our Jimmy when he needed us, were we? But I'm damn sure I'm going to be there for the other two, Jim. And I'll help them any way I can. Listen, mate, I don't know what your game is, but we don't really trouble, all right? Then you must be really pleased with your bouncer, because he's just assured me that not one single piece of trouble has come your way. Hey, hang on a minute, wise guy. Don't you mean your bouncer? Well, my daughter's already told you we want nothing to do with it. What we do want is you and soft lad there out now. We're just trying to help you. I see it as my responsibility, you know, protecting the vulnerable. The only people we need protection from is the likes of you. Now, if you don't do one, I'm calling the police. Now, why would you want to do something as stupid as that? And what are you going to tell them, Ron? That I stopped a couple of drunks for smashing this place up? Or that one of my guys stood in the door all night, stopping trouble, and didn't receive a single penny in payment? Look, they've had the free sample and they're not interested. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. We're just telling you that we don't need them. And I'm telling you that you do. Is that a threat? <laughs> Ron, we're all friends here. Why would there be any need to threaten? We are simply doing business. You run a bar, my business is protecting bars. We need each other in order to survive. Business? Don't make me laugh. Listen, Sunshine, I've been a businessman for 20-odd years and nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Do you know what? You're just a parasite. Living off other people's hard work. I'm not going to talk to you anymore, Ron, because you're starting to annoy me. You don't know what you're talking about because if you did, you could realise that I am doing you a favour. I'll explain it to Jack. I look after this place, you pay me. Simple. I am not greedy, I charge a reasonable rate. End of story. If you go along with it, I guarantee you there will be no trouble. No trouble at all. OK? I'll see you around. Next tonight, they're often thought of as ungainly creatures, but out of Africa proves that ostriches are powerful but timid birds. Birds that were never built to fly. Listen, Jack, we're going to have to tell our mate what's going on. Oh, no, it's best to keep it between ourselves. But he's going to start asking questions if that bouncer comes back on the door, isn't he? Yeah, well, there's no sign of him or that Finnegan fella today, so maybe that'll be the last we see of them. Anyway, what did the doctor say? Well, he wants me to take a week or two off. Take it. No chance, Jack. You know with all this going on. You know what this is, don't you? It's a flame of protection racket. Dad, you've not been so good and you woke up with chest pains. I'm not having you making yourself ill over all this. Yeah, this one looks a bit secretive. Yeah, it's about... It's me dad. He's been having a bit of chest pain. 
Yeah, but uh, I'm all right now. You know, I've been to cracks. And give me some more spray. Well, don't be doing too much, eh, Dad? Jack, we've got to tell him. No, not yet. Just leave it with me. I'll think of something. I'd give up on that if I was you. Yeah. Oh, to think. We used to watch tellies this bad when we were kids. Well, can't we rent one? I don't know. We might as well wait until we're out of here. Which won't be too long, I hope. I'm gonna be spending the weekends at Keith Smith's. We got a stag knife for one of the lads on White Watch. Yeah? Well, as long as you don't want any more clothes washing. There's a mop going on the bag wash again till next week. It's too much like hard work. Well, I need me suit. But I'll get it dry cleaned, ma. Hiya, Tim. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah. Platoon, I've seen it. How are you going to watch them? We haven't even got a decent telly, never mind a video. Well, I'll go to Sharon's and watch them. Hey, you're grounded, remember? Oh, but I've got to see them if I'm going to be a soldier. I mean, I've got to learn techniques and that. What's all this talk about the army? I don't want you joining up. It's too dangerous. You didn't stop our Ben being a fireman. Isn't that dangerous? Yeah, I mean, it's not as if he has to go to war or anything, love. No, it's all peacekeeping now, you know. Yeah, well, I still don't like you. Here you are, Mum. Bosnia assisting the United Nations in peacekeeping efforts. I mean, I won't even be going to war. And I might go to Africa or something. I wish. Do you mind? This is serious. I don't want him joining the army. Well, it could be a good opportunity, you know. You never know, we might even end up with a trade. Yeah, I could be a general or anything. I mean, there's no harm in going down to the recruitment office and just having a word with them, is there? Oh, please, Mum. There's something I really want to do. Will you come with us? Hey, isn't this like one of those moments that they have in the movies when we're supposed to feed each other tasty tidbits of food? <laughs> She'll put a steak and kidney pie in the fat, then. Oh, God, you really know how to turn a fella on, don't you? Are you saying I've got to try harder? Much harder, if you want me to take you for a drink tonight. Well, that depends if I can get my mum to babysit or not. Well, you'll have to do your best, won't you? Because it was in your stars this morning. You will spend a passionate evening in the company of a hot-blooded man with kissable lips and a Mercedes. Mm. <laughs> I like the sound of the Mercedes. Oh, you're a gold digger. Oh, look the bag. See it's right. What's he doing here? Asking me out on a date. Look, love, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not poking my nose in anything like that. But I'm not sure whether all this is right, you know. All what? Well, you and your mates. You can go out a little carly to think about. I make a what's it? Unstable. What, mate? Oh, look, first there was Gary, wasn't there, eh? Then Mike Dicko. Now it's a flaming hairdresser. And what's his job got to do with it, eh? No. No, I don't. He's a bit light on his feet, isn't he? I am not even going to answer that. <sighs> hey, Jimmy, can I have a quick word? Yeah? I've got a bit of a problem with the bar. All oh, right. Yeah, the thing is, someone wants to run the door. What do you want me to do? Give him a reference. A fella called Finnegan, if you ever heard of him. Doesn't ring any bells now. Leaning on your heavy, is he? Well, he put a bouncer on the door last night. But I'm just really worried it's all getting out of control. Well, just want to tell him you're not interested. Yeah, well, I don't think he's the type of fella that'll take no for an answer. Listen, love, take it from me and I should know. The only way you're going to get rid of them is if you stand up to them. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. Listen, um, I don't suppose you'd fancy doing the door for us, would you? Am I hearing you right? Well, yeah. You'd be paid well, like, and we'd really be helping us out. Oh, I'll bet I would. Listen, love, when I came asking you for a job, you told me where to go. But now that you're in trouble... It's a job. Take it or leave it. Now, let's see. I'll leave it, thanks. Get someone else to do your dirty work. I'm not that desperate. So, I've got it all worked out. Half term, we're off. Oh. I found this place up in the Cairngorms. Um, dads and lads. Oh, look, Dad, you don't have to have all this trouble, you know. Oh, it's no trouble. I want to spend time with you. Oh, really? So, I thought we could drive up to Scotland, uh, camp out, canoe, bit of orienteering. Be great fun. Dad, hang on. What's up? <clears throat> The thing is, Mum's asked me to go to Germany with her at half term. What? Well, she's going there on business, looking for sausage. And she asked me if I'd go with her. Daniel, 
Your mother has to ask me before you go anywhere. She's got no right organising anything without checking with me first. Does that mean I can go or not? I don't know. Things are at a delicate stage between your mother and I. In any case, I wanted us to spend some time together. I'll have to think about it. Now then, Tim. This is just a preliminary interview. You know, to find out what you'd like to do in the army. Oh, well, actually, Sergeant knows. I've been reading some stuff, and I think I'd like to be in the Paris. The Parachute Regiment. Well, that's probably the toughest to get into, but all the regiments will be open to you once you pass the aptitude test. But what does that entail, love? Mum, mm -hmm. it's Sergeant. It's a touchscreen test where the entrant has to undertake various tasks, matching up symbols, number skills. Does it matter that he hasn't got any GCSEs? No. As long as Tim passes this test and is physically fit, he shouldn't have any problems. So I'll be in? Yes. If you prove yourself to us, Tim, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a good career in the army. Well, sometime today, please. Yeah, but this is really urgent. I need to see you today. Dan? Oh, look, I've got to go. What are you doing? Dinner's nearly ready. I was just on the phone. Well, I can see that. Why don't you use the phone indoors? Uh, well... Oh, it's not a girlfriend, is it? No. Yeah, well, come on, wash up. Dinner in ten minutes. Hi. Oh, hi. Got yourself a girlfriend, have you? No. That was just to keep him happy. Just doing my head in. That's what dads are meant to do, isn't it? Yeah, but ever since him and his girlfriend split up, he's been trying to be my best friend. All this lads and dad stuff, making me climb mountains and things. Climbing mountains? You're gonna have to do something radical. I am doing. That's what the phone call was about. So you can see here that once you've completed the physical and medical at the selection center... How long will he be there? Two days. It's backed up by more interviews, but once you get to that stage, you'll be well on the way. Well, when can I go? Oh, Tom, love. I'm glad he's keen. We need him like that. Right. So before I book you in for the test, there are three things we have to talk about that might affect your eligibility. Health, which the medics will see to. Drugs, and any involvement with crime. So I have to ask you, Tim, have you ever taken drugs? Never, Sergeant. And he's telling the truth there, love. Good. Any trouble with the police? Well... Um, <clears throat> not really, but uh, Tim was in my shop late one night and there was a bit of a mix-up and someone called the police and uh, he ended up getting arrested. Oh, I see. It was nothing serious, though, love. What was the outcome? Well, the police just cautioned him. I mean, I tried to explain everything, but you know what they're like. So he didn't go to court? Oh, no. He hasn't got a criminal record. Good. I wouldn't worry about it, then. We'll book you in for the test appointment, and then I'm afraid it will all be down to you, Tim, and how well you perform. But if things go smoothly, we'll have you signed up pretty soon. I wouldn't normally see a client without an appointment, but seeing as it's you... Does your dad know you're here? No. So, a mysterious phone call and a secret meeting. Yeah. Dan, please tell me why you're here. Um... Is it to do with the custody hearing? Yeah, sort of. What about it? Well, the thing is, I was wondering if you'd go out on the dad again. I beg your pardon? Well, he's been sulking around the house, and he's been giving me loads of airache. Really? And I think it's because of you. Do you? Yeah, and if you asked him out, he'd say yes. Um, what about you? You weren't exactly happy about me being around before. Well, I think I understand women better now. Um, my mum's going out with someone, so... Is she? He's called Patrick. OK, I'll uh, give it some thought. And whatever you decide, this conversation never happened. Client confidentiality is my strong point. Right. Hi. Um, I'll see you. OK, bye. See you, then. Your clients are getting younger, eh? Yeah. So, how are we doing? Well, I don't expect it'll come as any surprise to you, but I'm afraid we're going to have to start all over again. There you go, my love. 50p. Thanks a lot. 
Cheers, sis. And I think table six is for you, Jazzy. Yeah, no problems. Dad, these lenses are really irritating me. Uh, never mind, love. They say it takes a few months before you get used to them, innit? Oh, no. Hi, Jackie. It's Miss Dixon to you. <laughs> I don't mind if we keep this a purely business relationship. Look, mate, we told you last night. Yeah, we don't need your bonds of friends in here. Like we said, we didn't have any trouble before he came. Like so I said, what we're offering is insurance. Yeah, well, we've been thinking about this. And... I'll tell you what, Miss Dixon. Why don't we go to your office and discuss the final details in private? I'm very persistent. You won't get rid of me until you've heard my entire sales pitch. Right. Now, I just need to go through the exact sequence of events on the night of Gladys's death. Again? Yes, well, with Elaine out of the picture, things look rather different. And as I told you the other day, now there's nobody to corroborate your version of what happened. I understand all that. Fine, but details are important. Now, this part of the statement relates to the moments immediately prior to Gladys's death. Yeah, it's just as it seems then. So you say, we did it together? Yeah. Fine, but we need to go into that in more detail. Now, whose hand went on the pillow first? Um, Elaine's. But I think she was trying to pull the pillow away at first. At first? Yeah. And then she just sort of stopped fighting against Gladys and uh, I think started pulling down the pillow. You think? Yeah. But she couldn't do it, sir. So she asked me to help her. And you did? Yeah. I uh, put my hands on the pillow too and uh, started pressing down. Pressing down. Look, do we have to keep going over this? I'm sorry to push you, Mick, but you've really got to be clear about this. The prosecution will be gunning for you, be no doubt about it. No, I'm not. Good. So let's get to the minute detail. Because you're going to have to be sure that the story you go into court with is the one that you stick to. Any slight deviation and the prosecution will pounce. I've seen it happen before. They'll make mincemeat of you. The point of the contract is so that we both understand the terms of the agreement. That way, you can complain if our service isn't up to scratch. Hold on. This says £750 per week. <laughs> How much? 750 But don't forget, all my operatives are self-employed, so you don't have to pay any holidays, sickness or national insurance. All works out in your favour. Thanks for all your interest, Mr Finnegan, but I'm telling you straight, we're not interested. Too right, we're not interested. What about our profits? Dad, we don't need to get into all that. I don't want your insurance. This just seems like blackmail to me. Now, thanks very much for your offer, but I want you out of my bar now. And if you come back, I'll get the police. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be happy to advise you that this is a perfectly legitimate business contract. I don't want your security. I'm not interested. Don't worry, it's only a copy. Uh, she said she didn't want a contract. I'll leave one here anyway, just in case. Get your time to think about it. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you had company. Yeah, well, they're just gone. You've got my number. I'm afraid Des is busy tonight, so he won't be able to help out, but any emergencies, do give me a call. What was all that about? Close the door, son. I think we've got a problem. H E N S I V E. Comprehensive. I won't bother putting Thornton down as a reference. Well, you'll have to. Because if your headmaster's not down, they're going to wonder why, aren't they? What should the army care what he says? He's a biff. It's him. <sighs> Any reference you get from him will be fine. When I was a school governor, it was policy to be fair to all the pupils, even if they had been excluded. And remember what that sergeant said. It all depends on what you do for them in these tests. Will you go over a few of those test examples with me? Who, me? Well, I'd ask our Ben, but he hasn't got your patience. Yeah, I'll help you all I can, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Simbad. 
Oh, hey, we didn't expect the reception committee. Um, don't you be getting too drunk here. You've got a salon to run in the morning. Well, what would you give for a sleeping partner who'd sleep a bit longer? <laughs> Do you want to stay on the door all night, Jack? Well, Finnegan said he wouldn't send any bouncers in tonight, but I wouldn't trust him as far as that throw. Look, love, if anybody does turn up, we'll just tell them that they're not needed. And if they won't go, then we phone the police. As simple as that. Yeah, OK, he says. Look, Dad, why don't you just go home, mate? No, I'm fine, Michael. I'm staying here. You look terrible. Michael, I said it. I'm staying here. Well, look, if there's any trouble, I don't want you getting involved, all right? Yeah, all right, son. Yes, Jens, what can I get you? Three beers, please. <laughs> you certainly know to spoil me, don't you? Any time, mate. Cheers. Cheers. There you go. That's six pound, please. That's a good easy for it. Um, excuse me, but you forgot to pay. I think you wanted it, lads. Yeah, the beers. Six pound, please. Thank you. So everything go right, Jack? Yeah, fine. Hello, Mick. Hi, Linz. Peace. You uh, celebrating, are you? Just celebrating being out together, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you. So, uh, what was all that about? God knows. What can I get you, Mick? I'll have a bottle of lager, please, Jack. Mm -hmm. I could do a bottle of scotch, like, but I've uh, got to do a stint of the chicken later. <laughs> Don't suppose we're coming to work back here now, will you? What do you say? Oh, well, you know, I just thought with things being the way they are. You mean you don't want a murder on your stuff? No, I didn't mean that at all. Well, I hope not, because I'm not guilty. All right, Beck, take it easy, eh? <laughs> right. Let's improve your willpower. Oh, hang on. Just let me finish this way. <sighs> you can read that later. Be nice to spend a Friday night doing something together for a change. Well, we've got all Saturday and Sunday, yeah? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well, why can't you be like a normal dad and go and get a pint or something? Because I want to stay in with you. Anyway, what's the point of drinking on my own? Well, you could ask Eleanor along. What? Well, I bet she still is interested in you. <laughs> I doubt it. Not now. Anyway, I stopped seeing Eleanor so I could spend more time with you. I just think you should ask her out again. Yeah, but it's not as simple as that. Look, I'm going to go get myself a bath. I don't need you to get my rubber ducks out either. <laughs> Here you go, ladies, two cocktails. Now, what was yours? Gin and grapefruit juice. Right. Did you get the feeling you've been somewhere before? <laughs> Had a deja vu from last night, eh? Hey? I don't suppose you fancy a quick one down at Rubber Soul, do you? Well, I was going to see if you fancied coming back to ours, you know, for a coffee. Right, <laughs> sounds good to me. Oh, how about your dad? What about him? Just for the feeling he doesn't like me, you know? Well, what dad does like his daughter's dates, eh? Hey! 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 Hey, I don't think you come to the bar, because you won't be getting saved. Hey, hey, hey that's enough. Let's just be cool, eh, boys? What was all that about? A pair of divvies. Listen, thanks a lot for that, Mick. Oh, forget it, Jack. Well, I better get to the gym. Yeah, See you later. See you, Lisa. For business, eh? Listen, I'm really sorry about that, everyone. Look at the state of the place. Do you think they were Finnegan's people? I doubt it. Do you want your coffee now? I don't want you to move anywhere. Oh. <laughs> Ever? Well, I suppose you could wriggle around a little bit. Oh. And you're going to give me something to wriggle about? Oh, what about your mother? <laughs> my mum's asleep. And my dad won't be back till the chippy closes. Oh, I feel like I've just won the lottery. <sighs> anyway. 
Ja, ja, so ist es. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi. So I thought you were working. I was. But Mick came in. And since as I've gone to Simon to do, he let me go early. <laughs> that was very good of him. We were just gonna have a coffee. Yeah, yeah, we were. Lovely. <laughs> Milk and two sugars for me, love. You all right, mate? Hey, old boy, see you later. Hi. So you reckon Tina stands up a chance in a while? Yeah, if he does OK in these tests, looks like he'll be joining up. That's what the lad needs, isn't it? Well, either that or I'll end up inside. Yeah, well, the way Ellen and the kitchen's talking, they could be sharing a cell with him. Have you seen her today? Yeah, fat lot of good it was and all. I mean, all she told me was I'm up to me neck in it. I mean, how Gemma could have told me that. No, I ain't doing one's the worst thing that could have happened. I've been thinking, um, could be better for you, Elaine, doing a runner. How'd you work that out? Well, you can say what you like. She's not here. Who's to say any difference? She's gone for good. You said that yourself, yeah? Yeah, OK, she's gone for good. So? It's time you started thinking about you and the kids. Come on, son. I can't just diss Elaine completely. Think about it, Mick. Your brief's already told you that you're right in it. Now, you've got two choices. You either go into court and say, yeah, I stuck the pillow over Gladys' head, or... It didn't exactly happen that way, did it? Just listen to me, will you? Or, knowing that Elaine's not coming back, you say, well, tell them. You want to change your statement and say you weren't even in the room at the time. Are you kidding me or what? Well, who's going to say any different? So you want me to trash everything that went on in that room? All the promises I made to Gladys, you want me to trash all that? What options have you got? I've got one option, sir, but that's to tell the truth. And who's going to back it up on that? Well, you for a start. Me? Yeah. I told you the truth straight after it all happened. Did you? Come on, son, you know it did. You know I'm telling the truth. Mick, you did what you did because you felt it was right. I agree with you. But no court's going to back you up if you stick with your version of events. So what are you saying? I'd lie through my teeth. I'm saying you should do whatever it takes to keep you out of jail and keep you and the kids together as a family. Next year on 4, you're in the only place for Friday comedy and definitely among friends. a few things ready before we get off to school. Why well, didn't one of us wake me? Because we can get ready in our room. No, no, you didn't have to do all this, though. I mean, I could have sorted it later, Gems. So I might have got to do everything now Elaine's gone. Yeah, I suppose they are. And Gem, I'm going to be late for school. Bye, Dad. See you, babe. See ya. Rachel, we're already up. Sorry. Yeah, you sit down and get over to you. I haven't got one. I've got an open for you, Jackie. Right. There you go. Is everything all right? Yeah, it is. Only I know you like to eat your bread and your yolk. <laughs> Favourite bit, eh? 
mind if I get mine now? It can be soft, you don't have to ask. You know I don't like you when it's like that. Oh, yeah, you have mine. I'll get some later. Oh, you stupid idiots. Will you look at me shit? I'm sorry. Yo, just leave it, will you? I'm sorry, Christian. It was an accident. I'll iron you another shirt. Oh, that looks so... I'm really sorry. I feel like this is all my fault. You should never have got involved. What do they say down the hospital? It's just a few cuts and bruises. At least nothing's broken. No thanks to that bunch of thugs. They want stringing up by the soft bits and running through. Yeah, you got to catch them first, Dad. That shouldn't be too difficult, should it? You haven't got to be the brain of Britain to work out the tide in with that Finnegan fella. Well, according to the police, unless one of us can give a formal identification, there's nothing they can do. <laughs> don't look at me. I don't fancy ending up six foot under. So that's it then, is it, eh? Someone can beat you to a pulp and just walk away scot-free. I thought your new labour lot were going to change all that. Listen, I'd better get off. I'm going to go in on the police station and go through some mugshots. Michael, are you going to go along with it? Um, no, I don't really. I don't really feel up to it, Dad. <sighs> right, well, I'd better get down and open up the club. Stick two fingers up at that Finnegan and his mob. No, it's so, so Dad. Christian's going to open up. Christian, that one would be worse than useless if Finnegan and his lot turn up again. Yeah, and your heart's going to give up if you get into any more aggro. So what are we supposed to do then, eh? Sit back and let a bunch of no marks bleed us dry? Well, maybe we should do like the police said last night and put our own bouncer on the door. At least that way we'd know who he was working for. There, young man. I don't want you anywhere near these premises after your shenanigans the other week. I'm sorry the way I've behaved, Mr. Crosby. I should think so, too. You behaved like a total hoodlum. And I know it was you that stole my security tapes. I know. I've been well out of order. Not one more step, Timothy. I am warning you. It's all right, Mr. Crosby. I'm not armed. At least not until I get in the army, anyway. You're joining up? Well, yeah. And I was wondering if I could put you down as a referee. You want me? To give you a reference? Mm, yeah. It's got to be from someone dead respectable. How does it now? Yeah, you know, someone that everyone really looks up to. And uh, someone who understands the machinations of Her Majesty's armed forces, I suppose. Er, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, I suppose I could give you a few pointers. Put you on the right career path. Have you thought of the Royal Engineers? Of course, first on my list. Well, if you uh, knuckle down and work hard, I suppose there's no reason why you shouldn't rise through the ranks. Thanks, Mr. Crosby. Hey, she could have me, you know. Hey, down, boy. You're spoken for. Uh, well, she'll never know what she's missing, eh? Huh? I spoke to Alan and her today. What about? You know what about? I'm changing your story. I don't know about that, sir. I mean, it'd be well out of order. Oh, and Elaine getting off and leaving you to cop for the lot, isn't like? Yeah, but her <sighs> getting off isn't going to change what happened. And I don't know if I can stand up in that cause and lie about how Gladys died. Well, if you can't do it for yourself, think about Leo and Gemma. Well, look, they're sounds, then. I'm dead proud of them. Even our Gemma seems to be taking in her stride. No, I reckon they'd want me to stick to the truth. Well, I hope you know what you're risking, because I'd like for you to miss out on growing up like I have with our Ruth. Oh, she's two today. And I've got to make do with a lousy phone call. It's like hard being a dad from the end of the phone, you know. Hey, sin, ain't right? Hi, mate, you're all right. Can't slouch about like that, young man. If you're going in the army, watch your posture. Chest up, shoulders back. That's right. 
Good. Don't ask, mate, because that's one relationship I wouldn't mind conducting from the end of a phone. Come ahead, Bilko. We'll see if Her Majesty really needs you. Needs you. Mrs. Reese. Yeah? Me too, love. Pleased to meet you. I'm the dreaded mother-in-law. Hey, all, Michael. I'll let you keep you going for a bit. Where are you going? I've got to go to work, haven't I? <sighs> Not a minute, Dad. What for? I've got to go. I don't want to leave Christian on his own. You won't be going anywhere if you start messing with the likes of that Finnegan. Look, he's not going to get the better of the bus. Oh, for God's sake, Dad. We can't let him win. Dad, will you just look at me? This could have been you. These people are not bothered who they are just so long as they get what they want. Just leave it, eh? No way. How do you reckon you'd have stood up to this sort of treatment? Finnegan means business. Do you think I don't know all that? Keeps going on at me and Jackie to sign a flaming contract. Yeah, and he won't back off until he gets what so he what wants. So what do we do? Just lie down and let him walk all over us? <sighs> Dad, you can't afford this sort of aggro. Not with your old dodgy ticket. I've got no choice, Michael. Oh, don't be stupid. Dad, you've got to look after yourself. The next ambulance call to that bar could be for you. <sighs> That's what you suggest, then. Because everything I've got is invested in that bar. My own, my savings, even my flame and pension, everything. And anyway, if I do walk away, who's going to look out for our Jacqueline? So you see, Michael, I can't just walk away. Looks like I'm in it for the duration. Well, Tim, everything looks in order. Very good, in fact. Thanks, Sergeant Rose. Tim uh, Timothy's worked really hard getting that lot together, you know. So does that mean I'm in then, Sergeant Rose? <laughs> Keen as ever, eh? We all are. You know, for Timothy to do well, eh? Well, now we know his pedigree. Let's see how good he is at taking orders. We're gonna do some drill then, Sergeant Rose. Not quite. Come on, lad, let's see how you measure up in the trainability stakes. There you go. Tile off. At least you make a better cup than our Christian. I swear, he just waves the bag at the water. Great soft gulp. Talk about flame and gnats, <laughs> Yeah, I like mine a bit stronger, too. You're really quite pretty when you smile, you know. Thanks. I know he's me son, but I always reckoned he'd end up with a bit of a dog. <laughs> Still the full of surprises, eh, love? <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to show me around your little love nest? Or have I got to do the grand tour on my own? Uh, no, I just haven't really finished cleaning yet. Oh, you've got our Christian for that love. I used to tell him that the vacuum fitted his hand better than mine. <laughs> Big lump fell for it every time. That's the spare room. We don't use it very often. Well, if you're thinking of having kids, I wouldn't bother, love. It took me weeks to get this lot back after soft lads. <laughs> we haven't really talked about starting a family yet. So, this is where it all happens, eh? Our well, Christian's not going back the boy scout, says he. What's he doing, camping on the floor? Well, actually, it's mine. I've got a bad back. Oh, I'm sorry, love, and here's me dragging you all over the show. I'm OK, Mrs Wright, really. Bunty, love. As long as I'm on a flat surface, I'm fine. Well, I hope that son of mine's looking after you. Yeah, of course he is. Chris is brilliant around the flat. Well, he better be, love. Otherwise, me and him will be having words. So how did he do then, Sarge? I think Tim's given a pretty good account of himself. So what happens next? Well, I've got to get me height, me weight, and my bins checked out now. And then what? We'll collate all the information and take it from there. So, uh, do you reckon I'll get in? I think you look a reasonable bet at this stage. Oh, nice one. That'll do for me, Sergeant Rose. Thanks. <sighs> Thanks, Sergeant. More glasses. 
Oh, Jackie, where the hell have you been till this time, love? Me and Christian have been run off our feet here. Been busy. Busy? The poor chef's got steam coming out of his ears. At least something's going right, then. Why, what did the busy say? Well, unless the police can get some concrete evidence, there's nothing they can do. Oh, marvellous. And that's what I pay me taxes for, is it? So what are you going to do, then, Dad? I mean, Finnegan's going to be back with that contract at some point. Yeah, I know. And you saw what happened to our Michael. Don't fancy any of that coming our way. Yeah, but I don't fancy handing over 750 quid a week for the rest of my life, neither. Yeah, well, as far as I can see, we're fast from that of options. Then we do like the police said and put our own bouncer on the door. Oh, yeah. Just give us a minute, eh? I'll go and give Superman a ring. Or Mick Johnson. He soon saw the damn lads last night. We could put him on the payroll. Do you reckon he'd be interested? I'd hope so, Dad. But we could be stuck with Finnegan and us thugs forever. Why did my dad go to prison? Well, we're gonna have to go and live with me, Mum. But I want to stay here. Well, it's not up to us, is it? I mean, they might even put us into care. I don't want to go going home. Oh, it's all right, Jane. It's gonna be all right. I think it's something. What's up, Jem? I don't want my dad to go to prison. Oh, what are you gonna do, Simbad? Really, I just wish my mum and our little Ruth could have been at the wedding. Yeah, but that's what happens when you go rushing into these things. That's typical of our Christian. A bit more notice, and I could have made the wedding and all. Were you away? No, but I'd already made plans for that weekend. Of course, I'd love to have been there, but well, you know how it is. It's only me, Rich. Oh, I'm starving. Watch for tea. And what are you doing here? Look at that gormless great thing. Stood there as if he'd never seen me before. Christian. I'd have gone off early if I knew you were here. We've been fine, haven't we, love? It's given us a bit of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we've had a really good natter. Rachel, will you look at the state here? I don't know what my mum must think here. She's not usually like this, it's just that, well, she hasn't been too well lately. Oh, give over, will you, Christian? Leave the poor girl alone. It's all right. I'll go and get changed for a start dinner. You take your time, love. This one can see to the meal. Yeah, yeah, I'll do something really nice, Eamon. Oh, well, I suppose there's always a first time. Yeah, good as new, look. A snip at 75 quid. We don't need a new hook, I think, soon, bad. Yeah, I know you don't, Princess. Come here. I just don't know what's going to happen to us if my dad gets sent down. The only thing is, Leo, I just don't know. Can't we come and live at your house? I haven't got one. Tinette blew it up. Something like that, yeah. What about your mum? Couldn't you stay with her? She hasn't seen us for ages. She probably wouldn't want us there anyway. What about your nana and your granddad? I can look after me and Leo, honest. Yeah, I know you can, darling. And just to prove it, why don't you go make me a nice cup of tea, eh? Go on. There's some chocky bickies in there. She's one unhappy little girl. She's been having all sorts of nightmares and everything. She's even started wet in the bed. Does your dad know the state she's in? She's been trying to hide it from the both of us. That's why she's been doing all the washing. Well, look, Leo, the trial isn't for a couple of months yet. I mean, anything can change in that time. Let's just say a prayer and hope that everything sorts itself out, eh? Christian, have you come to see Dad? I've been thinking about what you said yesterday and... Who is it, Dan? Look, we're going to miss the start of the film if we don't get a... Oh. Hello there. Just wondered how you are. Um, fine. I'd ask you in only, um, Dan, well, we're, we're just about to go to the cinema. Oh, right. Sorry, I've... don't let me keep you. Actually, Dan, I've got loads of homework. Why on earth didn't you tell me before? Well, I don't want to leave you down here on your own. No, Ellen is here. You'll be fine. Well, I'm really sorry about this. Look, I can go. No, no, no. Uh, it's fine, honestly. Um, you're more than welcome to join me for a drink now you're here. Thanks for coming in, me. No, 
I mean, it sounded like I had no choice. I'd have been straight round if I hadn't had to wait for Jimmy to take over. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. He's a bit on edge. What with all Michael getting beat up and all the trouble in here last night. You want to get that sorted, you know, Jack, before they do some real damage. Yeah, I know. That's why I've asked you to come in. And what's it going to do with me? Well, I've had it pointed out to me that I need some kind of protection in this place. I'm going to end up with a load of aggro that I don't need. Like those lads last night, you mean? Yeah, that was the second fight in a week. So why you got the heavy on the door? Well, that's just it. I haven't. You what? Well, he belongs to a local security firm. He's nothing to do with me. That's why I need to sort out someone of my own. Like me, you mean? Well, yeah. I saw the way you dealt with them yobbos. Oh, Jack, no way do I need that sort of hassle. Oh, please, Mick, at least think about it. I pay you that good money. Jackie, the last thing I need right now is to be involved in something like this. I'm sorry, Mick. I wouldn't have asked if I wasn't desperate. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. I'll see you, Jack. See ya. Well, what do you say? Is he going to do it then? No chance. That's it then. We're going to have to sign that contract, whether we like it or not. Can't stand Flab. Not in any shape or form. This is the lad who was going to be the next Wayne's sleep. Fought night and day with his dad to get in that dancing school. And now, look at him. Oof, about as much stickability as a slug on ice. Are you growing them coffee beans or what? It's ready now, Mum. I could never let myself go like that. I mean, I'm at aerobics three times a week. Well, stick it down there, will ya? God give you a brain, use it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Oh, don't have a bending like that. Not with her back. I'm all right. No, he can do it. There you go, man. Hope it's better than his tea. Oh, you stupid, bloody simpleton! Get a cloth! And you now get me bed ready. What, get your bed ready? If it's all right with you, love, I, I thought it'd stay for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Seeing as this one's the only son I'm ever likely to have, I want to make sure the pair of yous are getting off to a good start. There you go. Thanks. Mmm. It's delicious. Yes, I remember you said you liked it. So, have you um, come round to talk about the divorce? Ollie, I'm not here to talk business. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm not really sure why you are here. Would you believe because your son invited me? Daniel? Whatever for? I think you may be smothering him in a little too much fatherly devotion. Well, he said that. Well, in not so many words. A cheeky little... I'm the man who followed Dr. Spock to the letter. I think he was hoping that I could divert some of the attention away from him. Anyway, what's good for the goose? Sorry? Berlin, her new beau. Belle's seeing someone. Oh, I thought you knew. Patrick, dancers are spending a lot of time together. She's allowing a total stranger to play happy families with my son. Think about it, Ollie. If Belle's got herself a new man, she can hardly make a fuss about you and I, can she? Yes, but even so, I'm not having this Patrick just waltzing into Dan's life and just taking over whenever he feels like it. I'm sure he's far too busy concentrating on the new love in his life, which is exactly what I'd like to do now. I suppose you're right. What's good for the goose? Shall I turn the light out? No, not yet. Are you reading for a bit? No. Don't rate. What? Come back in here with me. Are you sure, Chris? I think two weeks and that thing is long enough. Christian, I'm really sorry I made you so angry. 
Just so long as you don't do anything like that again, Rachel. I won't. I promise. I'm not bothered if we'd never see Bob Brookie again. Let's just forget it then, eh? You have forgiven me, haven't you? Of course I have. I mean, that's what love's all about, isn't it? I thought I'd wait until the kids were in bed, you know, to uh, come round and have a word, like... What about? Gemma was in tears, the savvy. Ed and Leo were worried sick about what's going to happen to them if you go down. What? They've never said a word since I learned the time you got off. I've been congratulating myself all day and I will how Gemma's been coping with everything. Yeah, well, that's because she's got this stupid idea that if she does all the housework and everything, the authorities will let them stay if, you know, the worst comes to the worst. No idea. No, well, uh, Leo reckons she's been wet in the bed and getting up first thing and putting the sheets in the wash so you won't notice. The kids are mess, Mick. Oh, never even noticed. I've been too wrapped up in my own. What am I going to do, son? Well, you can tell Eleanor that Gladys's death was nothing to do with you, that you weren't even in the room when Elaine did it. Sin, I don't know if I can stand up and lie like that. It's got to be where they're going, Mick. But the CPS will probably drop the case. And even if they don't, you know, you'll probably get off of it when the case comes to court. This is about your kids now, Mick. But if you put them through any more of this, the pair of them will go under. It's a straight choice. Your principles or the welfare of your kids. Coming up next, the Booker Prize 1997, live here on 4. Aren't you coming round here after what happened the other night with my dad? Oh, it'll take more than him to keep me away, you know. Ooh. How do you fancy a night on the town away from Cardinal Corkill and the Brookside Inquisition? <laughs> well, well, it depends where you're going to take me. Well, how does a night in a flash hotel in South grab you? Oh, you really mean it? Of course yes. I do. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh, what about Kylie? Will your mum will have her, won't she? I don't know. I hope so. There's so <laughs> only one way to find out. Gorgeous. Come on, go and ask her. <laughs> Oh, Mike looks a bit better as his age, doesn't he? Do you reckon? Well, the swelling's gone down a bit round as I. Still looks like he lost out to Mike Tyson over 30 rounds, though, doesn't he? Yeah, well, at least he's out of the firing line while he's laid up in there. We've got to sort the bar out, Jack. That bouncer's going to keep turning up no matter how often we tell him to get lost. Yeah, I know, Dad. I'm working on it. <sighs> we haven't got a choice, have we? We'll have to pay Finnegan what he wants. £750 every week. I know, look, but what's the alternative? <sighs> Me getting beaten up, Miss Tom, or you? Jackie Finnegan and his thugs are going to keep on coming back. Not unless we find ourselves Manor Park's answer to the flaming Terminator. I'm not going to be held to ransom, Dad. As far as I'm concerned, that Finnegan can go and find some other mug to blackmail. See you later. Well, the thing is, Mum, I was wondering if, um, you wouldn't mind looking after Kylie again tonight. 
right, little fella. You two off somewhere nice? Well, yeah. Yeah, we're um, going to Southport for the night. Yeah, Lizzie, can you give me um, an Afri pin from the bag, please? I mean, the thing is, Mum, um, me and Peter thought we might like to, you know, stop over the night. All night, you mean? Well, yeah. Hmm? It's all right for some, eh, lad? So we were wondering if you'd have Kylie, only we really fancied a bit of a break, you know, don't get away from here for a while. Away from Jimmy, you mean? Oh, the thought never crossed <laughs> my mind. I don't know why, love, it crosses mine every day. <laughs> I know it's a lot to ask, Mrs C, but I promise we won't make a habit of this. Scouts on her. Go on, then, just this once. Oh, thanks, Mum. So, Mrs C. Go and pack your bags and lens before you go to work. Right. <laughs> and I'll make myself a big jug of coffee. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. <sighs> <sighs> do you think we should wake your mum up? Why is getting on a bit? No, I'll just leave her for a bit, right? How long do you reckon she's going to be staying? <sighs> I don't know, she's always a little bit unpredictable, me mum. Oh, is that right? Oh, no, mum, I, I didn't mean that. It was just that me and Rachel were wondering how long you'd be staying. Well, what are you doing still here, anyway? And you've got a job to do. Yeah. Well, go on, then. Cos you're no bloody use here. Is he, love? Besides, me and Rachel are going out in a bit. Are we? Did you... Yeah, look, I think mate would rather stay here, you know, mum. Oh, who asked you, you soft lump? No, I've got loads of things to do around the flat. I'm not taking any excuses, love. I've made up my mind. I'm taking you down that hairdressers and getting this lot sorted out. Well, I can wash it here. Mm -mm. I won't take no for an answer. Will I, Christian? No, my mum's right, Rachel. You do look a little bit of a mess. <laughs> How could the cat away? <laughs> if anyone could do with a flame and makeover, it's him. Hiya. Yes, Sin. Hi, Lynn. Someone's happy. Yes, I'm going away for the night to a posh hotel in Southport. Oh, I who is? Peter, at the salon. Ah, oh, that figures. He's just been telling me he's having a problem booking two single rooms for the night. Singles? Yeah. Oh, right. Anyway, I'm going to get you. Eh, uh, let's see. Uh, double chips, uh, meat potato pie, two of them big sausages and eat half a loaf, please. <laughs> oh, and uh, a Diet Coke. <laughs> Just a light lunch today, though, sir. Oh, no, I'm wasting away, Linz. You can't get anything decent to eat in that crappy b and we're stuck in. Oh, any chance of you going back to Carmel's? No, it's wrecked. I've got to find somewhere soon, though, Linz. Otherwise, I'm going to be down to about three stone. Not if me and Mick have got anything to do with it. <laughs> any loaves out there, Mick? Uh, you'll have to get one off the freezer. All right, sir. All right, mate. You've wasted. I was up half the night with Lou and Gemma. You know, I could kick myself for not realising the state they'd got it. Well, it's not your fault, is it? I mean, you've had a lot on your plate lately. Yeah, they're my kids, and they should be out there in front. Especially as they're the only ones who've never let me down. I don't want to lose them, sir. Then you've got to have a word with that solicitor. Tell you you want to change your statement. Well, it's not as easy as that, you know, sir. You're going to have to have a word with the kids then, aren't you? You've got to give them something to hang on to. Yeah. I'll sit down with them tonight, see if I can put their minds at rest. Though I would do that. God only knows. Not exactly going to make us millionaires, is it? Hey, it won't be long before the man is set to getting themselves bammed up for Crimbo, will it? We won't be able to spend it quick enough then, kid. Yeah. Why, Rach? Where have you been hiding? I was beginning to think Christian had got you locked up there. Of course, Snap just been a bit busy. Oh, yeah, and overdoing things by the looks of you. Her back's been playing her up. Hey, what? I, I should have introduced you. Jackie Peter, this is Mrs Wright, Christian's mum. Bunty. And you must be the Jackie who employs my son. Yeah. So what happened here then, Reg? Run out of shampoo, love? Well, I've just been a bit busy to bother, really. Oh, I. So is that what they call words of bliss, then? This lot's more like dreadlock than wordlock. Well, that's why we're here, love. I thought I'd treated it to a full makeover. Oh, go on for Rachel, please, Kelly. Well, when you're finished here, why's he come in the bar and have a drink with us? Oh, I don't know, Jack. I've got loads to do upstairs. Oh, give over, will you, love? Might as well show you off, seeing as I'm paying for the full works. Right, well, I'll see you later, then. Yeah, and tell that son of mine, I want my cocktail in a glass, not down my front. Is your Christian not measured enough, then, Bunty? Well, show me fella who does, eh, love? Well, what's your like? I bet you to laugh a minute upstairs, isn't it, with this one? Hello, Jackie. How are you? Well, I was considering coming in for a coffee, but I've had a bit of trouble recently. Trouble? No. We've had a few scuffles, but um, nothing to worry about. I heard Mike was beating up. Yeah, well, that was a couple of nights ago. Oh. Well, is he all right? 
Well, he's a bit black and blue, you know. Well, at least he's up and about now. Oh, some of these young lads are going to be quite a handful when they've had a few drinks. Yeah. Him, have you and Max ever had any trouble like that at Grant's? Oh, nothing like that. No. Not in that respect. Just as well, really. I imagine something like that can really wreck a business. Sorry, Peter, I know you're busy, but I just wanted a quick wait. Oh, you haven't changed your mind, have you? No, of course not. Because I've just booked a room, best in the hotel. Room, um, a double one. With a balcony, overlooking this. Oh, God, Lindsay, it's all right, isn't it, me and you sharing a room, like? Yeah, of course it is. Because I can change it for two. Peter Phelan, don't you dare. <laughs> I never like sleeping on my own. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Have you got a minute, cast only? I wanted to have a quiet word, like. Wait, yeah. But it'll have to be I'm the only one on at the moment. Um, it's just that I saw Mick earlier. I know there's no love lost between these, but well, with the other lane getting off, I just don't think it's fair all this going down on him. He killed me mother, Simbad. Now you can't expect me to feel sorry for him just because he got caught. All they did was help your mum go the way that she wants it. <sighs> just what are you getting at? <sighs> well. I want you to think about changing your statement. And say what, like? Well, I don't know. That your mum said loads of times that she wanted to die or that she pushed them into doing it. I don't believe you just said that. Please, Cassie, you've got to do something. I mean, it's not fair on Mick. What is fair, Simbad? All I know is that I've lost my whole family in the last few weeks because of that mate of yours. Cassie, if no one backs his story up, them kids are going to end up without a dad. Get him out of here, Jackie, please. Just get him out of my sight. It's all right, Jack. I'm on my way. There you go. Oh, thank you. It's ages since I had a good old girly natter. <laughs> Lots of spell left, in fact. Oh, you and I were really good friends, weren't you? Mm. I've really missed her these past few months. Which is more than can be said for that husband of hers. Oh, why? Who's he been knocking about with now? Oh, you must know. He's seen that young solicitor of his, Eleanor, something or other. Oh, it was. In case you reckon it's all off. Oh, well, it was very much on the last time I saw them. Oh, go away. In fact, she didn't leave his house this morning until well after nine o'clock. Everything all right, son? Yeah, there's been no problems. No, um, no unexpected visitors, like? No, I don't think so. Thank God for that. I wonder how Belle's getting on without her children around her. She must be awfully lonely. Yeah, but she's better off without them. Pair of paves, though, isn't she? But still her children. And for all intents and purposes, she's lost them. Probably forever. You don't get over losing your family very easily, you know. Yeah, I still miss our Tony like mad. Oh. One minute I had this pesty little brother giving me grief all the time, and and then he was gone, just like that. That was a car crash too, wasn't it? Yeah, it took me ages to accept that I was never going to see him again. There's not an hour goes by when I don't think of Matthew and Emily. A part of you has died, and you just left with this enormous wound that feels like it's never going to heal. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, me too. <laughs> going on like that. Oh, no, you're all right. I know how you must feel. Maybe one day, when you've got children of your own. I've never fancied getting into all that motherhood stuff. I just can't see myself heating up bottles of milk and pushing a buggy around the parade. You will do eventually. Most women want to start a family at some stage in their lives. Well, not this one. I guess I'm just not the maternal type. And anyway, I've got enough on my plate with all of this. Yeah. You feeling a bit better now? <laughs> yeah, thanks. I just can't believe Simbad just did that. Coming in here, wanting me to help get Mick Johnson off. What's he on, eh, Jack? Well, don't be too hard on him, love. Making Simbad go back a long way. 
I'm not you at all. What do you mean? Well, I'm just sick of being made to feel the bad guy in all of this. Oh, come on, love. That's not true. Isn't it? Because I can't hear you or anyone else slagging Johnson off for what he did to my mum while she was laying there helpless in his house. Instead of taking care of her like he should have done, he took that pillow and pushed it into her face. Don't know. And pushed it and pushed it until the life had gone out of her. I'm not going to let him get away with that. He's taken everything I love off me. I'm going to make sure he pays for it. You look brilliant, you know, love. You should stick a bit of slap on more often. Well, Kristen don't usually ever wear much makeup. Oh, don't be taking any notice of him. I never have. Well, come on then, Tom Cruise. Let's see what you can do. All right, sir. All right. All right. What's up with you? Swallowed your chewy or something? Wish it was that simple. Still no lucky house front. No. All we've been offered is a couple of mouldy owl shacks and a shed and a designated war zone. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Yeah, and some. I don't know, we've got to get a place soon. I mean, apart from anything else, we got camels lad away from the nomarchs he calls mates. Yeah, well, cheer up. You never know, there might be a place coming up on the close before long, eh? Why are you thinking of moving? No, not me, Mick Jono. I reckon Her Majesty could be offering him a nice long break before Christmas. Right, when that soft lad of mine finally fetches our drinks, we can get going and have a good old gossip, eh, Lord? <laughs> hey, you'll have to go and visit more often. It's ages since we had a gaily chat. Oh, it's a shame Casey's away on that dancing tour. She'll go mad, she missed this. Come on, cheer up, you. You look great, doesn't you, Christian? Yeah, you look sound, right. We don't overdo it, son. No, Mum, on a straight, you look great. Just as well, seeing as it's your wedding present. <laughs> Beats tea towels any day. Thought I might as well spend me money on Rachel. I didn't see the point in wasting it on the likes of you. Cheers, girls. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, my God! <laughs> I've never stayed anywhere this posh before. Well, when you're a big shot travelling around doing all kinds of air shows, you get used to it, you know? <laughs> so you stay here a lot, then? Oh. No, I usually stay in a B&B down the road. <laughs> oh, you've got the right sort of clothes for a place like this. Oh, you look brilliant, Lynn, same as you always do. So, where are you going to take me tonight, then? Well, actually, I wondered whether you fancied stopping here. I believe the, uh Room service is second to none. <laughs> I thought you said you fancied a night out on the town. Well, you can do that any time, can't you? And to be perfectly honest with you, Lynn, it's what I really fancy is you. <laughs> you could have seen his face. He nearly died. Oh, you're <laughs> terrible. I certainly hope so. I've had years of practice. <laughs> right, well, I've got to get back and make the tea. Oh, don't go, yes. And you don't have to bother on my account, love. I've got to get back and all. You going home? Needs must, love. Now, where's that son of mine? I bet you'll miss her, H. Yeah, it's been great. Oh, I wish you'd move that quick when I want him. You're just a beginner, love. It took me years to get that well trained. You want going home, Chris? Yeah, I need you to carry me back down. Oh, right. All right, if I get off to you. Yeah, on one condition. You bring your mum here again. <sighs> yeah. Don't you worry, love. I'll be over regular from now on. Cos someone's got to keep an eye on this one, haven't they? <laughs> oh, I'll see you later. <gasps> see you. What are you playing at? Taking a well undressed up, everyone. Yeah, well, I just thought all well, things would be quiet, you know. Well, I don't know. Looks pretty busy to me, what do you think? What are you doing here? Is there any way to speak to one of your business colleagues? Oh, just cut the crap and tell me what you want. Jackie, we're here to give our condolences to your brother. I hear he ran into his spot of bother the other night. Oh, as if you didn't know. What does she mean by that? You shouldn't have gone around making accusations, you know. Jackie, take it easy, love. You don't frighten me. I should hope not. It's all the nasty wee scallies out there you have to worry about. You saw the kind of damage they did to your brother. I'd hate to see the same happen to a pretty wee thing like you. Well, Mr Finnegan, uh, you've got any more trouble, OK? Well, that's easier on. All you have to do is sign on the dotted line. We'll sit over there, guys, sometime you think about it. But don't take too long. 
you know it makes sense. See you again, Nick. All right, Cassie. You okay? Oh, and you care, do you? Oh, please yourself. I don't want to row. Look, did you think I'd be soft enough to fall for a trick like that? <sighs> like what? You should know me better than that by now, Mick. Oh, I'm sorry, Cassie. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you haven't. Sending your mate round to do your dirty work for you. Hang on a minute. If you're going to have a go, at least tell me what I'm supposed to have done. Oh, so you're saying it was Simbad's idea to get me to change my statement? Simbad? You might have been able to wrap our Elaine round your little finger, but it's not going to work with me. Uh, will you just listen to me? Oh, bloody nerve! Expecting me to lie about what you did to my mum. Castle, you've got it all wrong. Oh, no, I don't think so, Mick. And neither will the busies when I tell them you've been trying to intimidate a witness. No, I'm gone a minute. No, I'm warning you, Mick. You or your mates come anywhere near me again, and I'll be down the police station so quick you'll choke on my dust. I have lost my family because of you. I'm not going to let you get away with it. Right, that's me ready for the off. Sure you've got everything, Mum? Of course I have. You're the one with half a brain. Oh, love. I'm going to really miss our little chats. It's been really nice having you here. It's been great. And just you remember what I said. You get out there and enjoy yourself a bit more. This lot will still be waiting when you get back. I'll try. I spent years sat at home while his father was off out enjoying himself. Don't you be doing the same. And if this one gives you any trouble, be sure and let me know. Right. Well, come on, then. I haven't got all night. Right. See you then, eh? Oh, stop mauling me, will you? You're not a baby anymore. Sorry. Just do what you're good at, eh? And carry me back down. Bye, love. See ya. It's lovely, that. Right, I think I'll go and end. Oh. How do we know? Oh. 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 Peter, are you all right? Oh, God, I'm in agony with it. Oh, my God. Oh. Do you think it was those oysters you had loads of them? No, 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 it no, wasn't there. Oh, where's the head? Oh, oh, God, it could be a heart attack. Oh, I'm going to have to tell someone. I think I know what it is. Oh, what is it, then? Well, in this case, it's called Lindsayitis. Lindsay-i? <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. You got me going, then, you big soft lump. Well, that's not exactly how I'd describe it, but I am. <laughs> if you want to help a dying man, oh. I'm all yours. £750 a week. If we sign this, we're going to lose all our profits. Yeah, and if we don't, we're going to end up with all kinds of fights in Agro, like last week. Jack, you know it's not safe, love. You saw what they did to our Michael. We've got a sign, love. Oh, Dad, there must be something we can do. There isn't. We haven't got a choice, have we? No, Dad, I can't. Well, one of us is going to have to. Flame at death warrant. So, that's it then. From now on, we've got to find £750 every week. Just how the hell are we supposed to do that? Well, I'm, I'm going to just have to put Casey's rent up and I use my bit of profit from the salon. But what about you? Oh, so you've got your share in the bar. I don't know, love. I can't afford to pay Finnegan nearly £400 a week. I've got to remortgage on my house to pay for out of my half of the profits. So what are you going to do, Dad? I haven't got much choice, have I, love? If I want to hold on to my half share in this place, I'll have to capitalise on my one and only asset. Looks like I'll have to rent my house out to the highest bidder. I just don't know why I let her get to me like this. It's not your fault. It has been the same ever since I was a kid. I mean, come on, she couldn't even be bothered to turn up my wedding. Well, to be honest, I'm glad she didn't. What's that supposed to mean? I've seen how she treats you, Chris. She would have ended up spoiling the whole day for you. You two-faced cow. Calling me mother after she spent a fortune on you in that salon. I'm sorry, I... Look at you, done up like some tart, flaunting yourself in the bar like that. 
No, I didn't even want to go. Come on, Rachel, you were loving every minute of it. I seen you sucking up to me mother, egging it on. I wasn't, Christian, honestly. It was your mum. You know what she's like. No, I don't. So why don't you tell me? I don't know. She just... She wants her own way You've the... got no room to be calling anyone's family. I mean, come on, Rachel. It wasn't my mother who stabbed me dad and then left him to rot underneath oh, the Christian, patio. Oh, please don't! While she was having it off with the nearest fella that took her fancy. Well, was it? No, I know it wasn't. I'm sorry. So sorry. don't you dare slag my family off. Because you're in your lot and not fit to wipe their feet. Have you got that, Rachel? My mother will mean more to me than you ever will. Have you got that? Have you got that? <laughs> Leatherbacks and loggerheads born on the beach and destined for the Indian Ocean. Next on four, rare baby turtles out of Africa. Bing. So, how's the walking wounded today? Oh, not so bad, thanks, mate. Oh, dear. Looks as if you've been in the wrong end of quite a beating. Yeah, never bothered taking his boots off, either. I don't suppose the police have had any luck finding the culprit? Uh, Jacqueline's been down and looked through some mugshots, but uh, she didn't recognise any. Mm. Well, you'll have to exact your own retribution. <sighs> well, if it means another dose of this, no way. I see you've had the sense to take some preventative measures. Oh, the gorilla on the door, you mean? Well, it's worth paying for another member of staff, isn't it, if it stops this sort of thing happening? Well, that's what my dad reckons as well. Like I said to our Jacqueline, didn't look like we had much of a choice, really. Oh. Sure you've got everything? Yep. Only I'd hate you to leave any incriminating evidence for the wife to find. <laughs> I wish you'd stop teasing me, piece of feeling. I never know whether to take you seriously or not. Everything I said last night was serious, Liz. I meant every word. Ah. Mm. Uh, I better go and get ready for work. I'll see you later tonight. Mm. Better check with my mum first. Well, while you're at it, why don't you let your dad know I'm going to be here to stay? Oh. Bye bye. See you. Just rang Jackie and said my stomach's off. I didn't realise it was that serious. It always gets to bad when someone's wound me up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you so much. I just don't know why you let to have a go with my mum like that. I mean, what harm she ever done to you? I know, and I'm sorry. I didn't want us to fall out over it. Well, what do you expect, Rachel? She's my mother. I'm not just going to sit there and let you slag it off. I'm sorry, I wish I'd never said anything now. Please, Chris. I did it because I was sticking up for you. You know how much I love you. I'm really sorry I upset you. I didn't mean to. Honest. I promise I won't say anything about your mum ever again. Can't we just go back to the way things were before she came? There you go, folks. Thanks. Thank you. Is that Finnegan's blood money? Yep. 750 quid, just like that. I can't believe we're going to be handing this sort of money over to him every week. Me neither. I mean, 
How are we supposed to pay the bills? We're gonna have nothing left. We should never sign that stupid contract. Yeah, it was either that long for Butch Finnegan and his men just walk in and wreck the place. What's up? I think I've just seen something nasty crawl out of the woodwork. Looks like they have lift off. So you don't think our relationship's going to prejudice the custody hearing in any way? Well, I don't see why it should. Especially as Dan was the one who got us back together again. Well, he's certainly pleased with the way things are going between us now. He's much more positive about what it is there around here. And I don't see that Belle has cause to complain now that she's got herself a new man. <laughs> you don't know Belle. I'm sure she'll do her utmost to get a clause into Daniel this weekend. He's going over to Formby. Hmm. She's picking him up after school. So, um, if you felt like coming over this evening... To discuss the hearing, of course. Well, what else did you think I had in mind? believe this? A flame and receipt? Received with thanks. At least we can put it through the books. Oh, yeah. Under extortion. There's no good going on about it. We're stuck with it now. Yeah, but it's not fair. I put so much into getting this place up and running, and then some fella just walks in and messes everything up. Yeah, I know, love. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. You risked everything you've got to help me when JC sold out. And now it's all blown up in your face. You're gonna lose the house and everything, can't you? I've got no choice, have I? Can't afford to pay the remortgage and filling it. <sighs> Dad, you gonna be all right? Yeah, of course I am. Don't you worry. Just gotta find a tenant, haven't I? Quick. I just wish you'd asked me first, and you must be mad trying to get Cassie to change her story. Well, I just thought I could talk her into making things easier for you, you know, and what with the lane getting off and leaving you in the mire like that. Well, she threatened to go the busies if either of us go near her again. Reckon she could get us done for intimidating the witness. Oh, talk about size tens. I'm sorry, mate. I just wish I'd kept me big gobs shut now. Right, I know you meant that. It's just that it's all gone so far now that I'm well and truly stitched up. Did you talk to the kids? Yeah. They're worried sick that I'm gonna get sent down. To be honest, then, there's not a lot I can say to put the mind at rest. Well, you know what I think. Talk to Anna. Tell her you want to change your story. It's the only way. Dad, try not to worry yourself too much. Something can turn up. Hello, John. Hi, Jack. Hiya. Hey, bottle of lager, please, love. Please. You might just be right there, Jack. All right, Sim. All right, John. Celebrating, aren't we? <laughs> no, just having a beer, you know. All right. Well, look, uh, I've got to give you something to celebrate, eh? What do you mean? Well, to be honest with you, mate, I find myself with a bit of a cash flow problem at the moment, you mm. know? No, no, mm. don't worry, no, no, I don't want to borrow any money, but, uh, well, I was thinking I'm short of cash and you're short of somewhere to live, so how do you fancy renting my place, you know, you and Carmel? Are you serious? How does 200 down and 550 a month sound? How does 400 a month sound? And that's pushing it. You're a hard man, Sim, but, uh, OK, it's a deal. All right. In advance, though. Well, all right, as long as I can move in on Monday. No. Oh, not me. I'll settle with you later, then, Mr Rigsby. Certainly, Mr Yarmouth. <laughs> Dad. Give us a second, eh? Hmm? Am I hearing things? You just rented your house out to Sim, Dad? Yeah. He's moving in on Monday. That only gives you the weekend to find somewhere else. Yeah, well, I was hoping that me one and only daughter might insist that I move in with her, you know. <laughs> Dad, there's no room, and you taste it. You know what me and Casey are like when we're together? Jackie, love, I'd go, honest, and it probably wouldn't be for long. No, Dad, I couldn't let you. Not with your horse, I'd never stand up to it. Not with some of the sights you'd see up there. Thanks a lot, Jack. Love you and all. Jackie, hello. Oh, hi, Dave. Is Cassie not in today? Right not. Uh... Unfortunately, she rang in sick this morning. It's nothing serious, is it? Well, between you and me, I think this ill feeling between her and Mick is really getting her down. Especially since Elaine disappeared. She was pretty obsessed about her yesterday, you know, when I was in here. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, poor girl barely had time to mourn her mother before this whole nasty business blew up in her face. I'll give her a ring, Dave. I'll see how she is. If you would, I think Cassie could do with a friendly shoulder to cry on. All right. I'll see you, love. Right. Bye, love. What can I do for you, Jacqueline? 
Um, actually, Bing, I wanted to ask you a favour. It's about my dad. It's not his heart again, is it? Well, yeah, that's part of it. He's been getting a few chest pains and twinges just lately. Oh, dear. Poor old Ron. Yeah, and the thing is, we've got a bit of a cash flow problem over the road. The bar's losing money? Well, no, not exactly. But my dad's had to rent his house out to Sinbad so that he can inject more finance into the business. Good Lord. And, uh, where do I come into the equation? Well, I was wondering how you felt about taking in a lodger. You know, like my dad did when you had nowhere to go. <laughs> I'm amazed that he's even considering moving in with me. I mean, Jacqueline, we've hardly been bosom pals since I took this place over. Yeah, well, I haven't actually mentioned it to my dad yet, so I thought I'd better check with you first. Oh, I see. Well, I, I suppose I do owe him a rather large favour. Please, Bing, he's desperate. He's got to be out of the house by Monday. Well, all I can do is try, but I really can't see him agreeing. If I were you, I'd prepare myself for a rather large disappointment. Feeling a bit better? Yeah, thanks. Chris? Yeah. What was your mum like when you were little? What? Only I thought if she'd given you the hard time then. Well, maybe that's. Maybe it's why you find it hard to cope with marriage. Go on about Rach. Please, Chris, I'm only trying to help. I know what it's like having a bad time when you're little. It changes everything. I used to think my mum loved me when I was a kid. Of course she did, Chris. So you want to know what it was like when I was a kid? How my old man used to put my mum through hell. How do you want the low down and how she used to take all the pain out on me, have eh? I'm sorry, I never knew. What did I have to make her love me? Doing special little paintings at school. Saving me pocket money to buy at Prezzi's. It all end up in the bin. But I never let her see me cry. Never, ever let her see how much it hurt. Oh, Chris. Every single time my dad took up with another woman, it was my fault. I was to blame. Had this little cupboard underneath the stairs. That dark. She'd lock me in there. All day sometimes. I'd hear her moving about crying. I'd just sit there. I'd just sit there all little up till she let me out. And I'd just wait. I'd just wait for the start all over again. College. Yeah, sound. And guess who's got a dead clever obi? Cherry Blair. Hey, you are looking at the makings of a great teacher here. Oh, I. What's that then? Some newfangled study aid. And that, my little runner bean, is to toast yours truly for making an excellent contribution to the school field trip. Oh, why was that? Feeding Ollie Simpson's jacket to a goose. Uh, Michelle reckons that. Right, as well as any teacher she's ever seen, and listen to this kid of luck. She says, I built up an excellent rapport with the kids. See? Michelle reckons I've been dead hard on myself in here, kid. But you were crap at controlling the kids. Yeah, but as Michelle says, look, I ended up gaining the students' respect. See? Look, gaining the students' respect. She really rates me, you know, Jack. You know, she thinks we make a dead good team. What do you reckon to that? I reckon them kids weren't the only ones you built up an excellent rapport with. Oh, get out of it, will ya? She's just a what's it, colleague? Yeah, with legs up to her neck and a backside I'd kill for. Look, she's dead skinny. I like something to grab hold of. Oh, you tried then, did you? Hey, you come here. This is the only backside I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interrupting anything, am I? <laughs> only if you two want to be alone for this evening, eh? Peter's asked me out for a drink tonight. Uh, look, I don't know whether that's a good Go idea. Go ahead, but... love. Enjoy yourself while you can. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Right, I'll go and give Kylie a bath before we have our tea. Do you know something? She's hardly in since she's been going out with that fella. Jimmy? 
I'll do your deal, OK? You keep that out of our Lindsay's love life and I won't tell your mate Michelle about your personal habits. Look at the flat hunting. Nah. Everyone I've rung so far has been snapped up. Oh, never mind, Dad. Something will turn up. At least I know one place that'll have a vacancy next week. Where? At Doss House, Simbad and his lot are moving out of. Well, you look stunning, Miss Kitson. And you are positively transparent, Mr. Simpson. Well, how do you mean? Well, I have been sitting in front of an extremely belligerent judge all afternoon. My lipstick is smudged and my hair hasn't seen a comb in hours. Well, fear not, my love. Because help is at hand. Oh, Ollie, please. I just want to sit and relax with a stiff drink. Well, that's wonderful because stiff and drink are just two of the things I had in mind. Run. Mind if I join you? Freeze yourself? How are things? Oh, uh, so-so, you know. Jacqueline's told me about your uh, housing difficulties. Oh, has she now? Ron, look, I know things have been a little uh, awkward between us recently, but I want you to know that there's absolutely no way that I would ever see you without a roof over your head. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about it, Bing. I'm sure something will turn up soon. I haven't forgotten the way that you took me in off the street when I was pretty desperate, and I feel that it's... Now my turn to repay the favour. Hang on. You're saying that you want me to move in with you? There's a room ready and waiting, old son. You've only got to say the word. Oh, really? Right then. Are you listening? I would rather kip on the streets than share a house with the likes of you. Oh. Maybe trying to offer a helping hand. Yeah, well, I don't need your charity. Thank you very That's much. That's just as well, then, isn't it? Because the offer is withdrawn. Fine. What did you say to him? I told him where he could stick his poxy room. There's no way I'm having him as a landlord. So who are you going to have then, Dad? Because from the response you've got so far, Bingo's the only one offering. Right. Now you come with me. Oh, oh, no, Oliver Simpson. I am not setting foot inside that bedroom until I've had something to eat and drink. You mean man can't live on love alone? No, woman, I'm afraid. Well, certainly not this one. OK. But first, just let me show you something. Oh, OK. I'm warning you. This had better be worth the effort. Oh, it is. I swear. Just trust me. Now. Are you ready? Oh, Ollie, please. I've had a hard day's work. All I want is something substantial inside me. Now, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, did you do all that for me? Well, I, I kind of hoped you'd let me share it with you. <laughs> of course, you do realise this is totally unprofessional. Mixing business with pleasure. Mm-hmm. I think you might have to find yourself another solicitor. Oh, that's one sacrifice that I'm more than prepared to make. Oh, thanks, mate. I'm not disturbing you, am I? As long as you're quick. I'm just about to start my supper. <sighs> Got a nice in here now, eh? Ron, I'm sure you've not called round here to admire the decor. No. No, um... Actually, I came to apologise. Good Lord. That's got to be a first. Only I think I was a bit hasty about the room. Well, you know, I thought you were pretty certain you'd find somewhere else. Yeah, well, uh, I think I was just taking on my worries out on you. You know, first in the final line and, and all that, like. I see. So, if the room's still free, are you saying that you want to take advantage of my offer? I could move in Monday if it's all right with you. <laughs> Why not? Just be like old times. Only this time, old son, you'd be paying the rent. You all right now? 
you said to me before about your mum. Thanks for telling me that, Chris. I thought it must have been really hard for you. I never told anybody before. Yeah, I know. It's like some terrible secret you have to keep hidden, in it? Your parents are supposed to be the ones that love you and take care of you. It's what I ever wanted off my mum. My dad was my hero. I used to love him more than anyone in the world. And he was kind, you know, and thoughtful. He used to buy me little prezzies all the time. Yeah? Mm. He used to make me laugh. Said I was his special little girl. And then when he, you know, when he started... <sighs> but just like everything got muddled up inside me. But, but, but you still let him get in bed with you? Only because I didn't know what was happening at first. He used to say he was cold or he needed a cuddle. And you bleed? I trusted him. Never thought my dad would do anything to hurt me. But Rach, you must have made him feel all right about what he was doing. No, I didn't. Then why did you let him keep on doing it? I never meant to, Chris. I would have done anything to make my dad happy. But not that. I swear to you, Chris, not that. Darling, but run. I'll get that. Oh, hi. Hello, can I have a word? It's a bit awkward right now, mate. Can't it wait till the morning? I'm sorry, but there's something I need to tell you. Okay, two minutes. Uh, I lied to you about what happened. I wasn't in that room when Gladys died. What? I was trying to make things easier for Elaine, you know, back up her story. You realise this changes everything? But now Elaine's done the day to me. I think it's about time I told the truth. Come on, slow coach, the water's getting... Oh, sorry, I didn't realise... It's all right, Mick's just leaving. Right, my office in the morning. We'll talk about it then. Are you sure you're all right? You look dead pale. I'll be all right once I get this inside me. It's how's it going, Marty? We knew you were in here. She's been doing me head in all week. Fussing around me as though I'm about to peg out or something. Oh, is it because he loves you? Oh, I couldn't stop thinking about you all day. Me neither. Oh, what have you done to me, Cam? All right, advice to see you, kids. Dad? Did you want another word about me prospects or something? I don't know. You'll do it for now. Only Lynn's a bird in the bush, all that sort of palaver, you know. Oh, haven't you got any homework to do or anything? Well, wait, love. I just thought I'd join the pair of yous for a family celebration, you know. Your old fella getting a top report off Michelle. Who? At the school. I think a Scotch is called for, don't you? Yes, my sort of thanks. Hiya, son. Uh, Jackie, can you get us two small whiskies, please? So I take it you two sorts of things, then? Well, let's just say we've come to a satisfactory and amicable arrangement. About time and all. Somebody gonna tell me what's going on? Michael, meet my new landlord. Landlord? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, you don't know, do you? It's just that I needed some more cash for this place, so I've had to rent the house out to Simbad. So, your father's moving in with me on Monday. So what about me? Um, I don't recall there was any mention of Michael in the deal, was there, right? Come on, Mike, you're a big lad now, aren't you? <laughs> so I'm out on me eating his daddy. Well, I suppose if you put it like that. Yeah. There you go. Oh, time you had something to drink to. Yeah, well, you can count me out of your little celebration. I might as well go and make the most of my own while well, I've still got one. I know it all went wrong, Rach, but your dad must have loved you. Yeah, he did. But you just misread the signals, eh? I didn't need him on, though, Chris. I never wanted any of it to happen. Yeah, but if you loved him as much as you say you did. Yeah, but not in that way. He was my dad. Daddy's little girl, eh? Oh. Come on, Rachel. Oh, <laughs> Christian, please don't. You're a right little tease. No, I wasn't. <laughs> you still are, aren't you, babe? Chris, please don't. See, this what turned them on. His little girl by her heart again. No, it wasn't like that! Come on, Rachel! Stop it! Stop it! Just get off me! Stop. How could you? After everything we've talked about, how could you do that to me? I hate you. Just keep away from me. Don't you ever touch me again!
If you would like to speak to someone in confidence about an abusive relationship, you can call Channel 4's free helpline on 0800 8344. Lines are open now until midnight. That's 0800 8344.